Welcome to I'm Spiritual Dammit. I'm your host, Jennifer Weigel. Joining me in studio, all the way from the UK, Kevin Moore. How are you at the Moore Project? But right here in Chicago, it's great to have you. Thank you. Thank you so much for uh, for doing this. I really appreciate you getting us on. Thank you. No, I yeah. appreciate you making the time. So Kevin Moore is here doing research and interviews for his documentary about channelers because this is a passion of yours. You have a lot of subscribers. You have your YouTube channel, The More Show, M-O-O-R-E, for anybody who wants to go out there and, and look it up. Fabulous interviews, very in-depth, a lot of content. But tell our listeners in the I'm Spiritual Damn it world how you came down this path. What yeah. got you here? What got me here, yeah. Um, well, <sighs> That's a difficult one because it, it, it's it's been a it's been a path it's been a journey. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think it's just been one thing. Mm-hmm. I think for myself though, if I, if I was to try to narrow it down, uh, I was pretty much um, obsessed at one point with uh, Art Bell from Coast to Coast. Of course. And this was back in two thousand and seven mm-hmm. when I had a very different past life back then, and um, I was just watching it. You know, while I'd be working away doing whatever it was that I was doing. And um, I just got fascinated with the metaphysical subjects, the, the spiritual subjects. And I'd had a UFO experience many years ago. Uh, my whole family had. And I think it was the UFO side that really pulled us in to begin with. And you, your whole family saw a UFO? Yeah, yeah. My whole, um, whole family back in uh, Slough in England. Mm-hmm. Explain um, what happened. Yeah. Well... You know, when I speak to my family about it, we can't really talk about it too much because mm-hmm. it's beyond our understanding. It's, it's, it, there's no reference to it, what mm-hmm. happened. Right. But um, there was a sighting with all of us uh, at our house. Mm-hmm. Uh, I remember this disc-shaped object was in the, in the background and it was just floating there. And I can still see it now and I, I really do not understand what it was. Mm-hmm. And... I, I rem- the, and the memory is very faded. You know, I must How have been. How old were you? When I it think I was about twelve when this happened. Mm-hmm. I remember going out the front garden, and there was no one there. It was like time had stood still. It was silent. Uh, what would have been a normally not busy road, but there would have been people walking by, mm-hmm. and. It was not the, the birds not being there. I remember that, and then I remember the craft being there. Then later on, it's like flashes of memory. Now, whether that's just poor memory because of you know being so young. Were you terrified or were you peaceful about it? Because I've heard both and counted. Uh, yeah. Just amazed that it was there. We all were. And then I remember the next kind of memory was in the back of the garden, and there were all these crafts very far high up. Um, I remember it was around the time of the Queen concert, the Queen tribute concert. We were able to kind of put it back to that time when we talked about it previously. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, all these objects. And then again, faded memories where it was late at night and we was all in my back bedroom and we were watching this cigar shaped craft just slowly go across. And then it seemed to just disappear. Now, the next day, we, we know it happened because many years later when I spoke to my sister about this, mm-hmm. she had actually drawn, drawn pictures of what she saw that day, which was a little bit different to what we saw. She still got that picture. Mm-hmm. Again, you know, I, ask, I speak to my folks about it. We can't talk about it too much because it's not something that we can put down as, oh, it definitely was this or it wasn't. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Now, when I went for a regression in L.A. Mm-hmm. Uh, with my still, you know, working my past life job at the time prior to going to university, this was, I had a very different regression to what happened that day and I the first thing I said at that regression I was like oh damn you know I've made that all up and he said well that's what, what they all say right they um, think they've made it well, up you know right. I, I, I think I wanted to see what I wanted to see there mm-hmm. right but it was very strange you know when in the regression I was take I was on board the craft I was naked I was on the, on this table there were these tall beings there they were saying that they put you, know, you on a table it, well, yeah. that's what I you know that's what you think so you think what, you were abducted I, I, I maybe want to think that right? right but but the thing is they were told me that you know I was always going to be looked you know that I was to be watched I, you know my mother was from Pallades you know that that, mm-hmm. that 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 you know that's that was the connection that my work was going to be of great interest to them uh, you know then 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 the next memory was being put into position where everyone was uh, stone cold silent in that in that room where that cigar shit came in mm. i was being put back into position and the next minute click 
then we saw it go past.、Mm. Did I want to see that? Was that an implanted memory? Did it, was that a memory that was there just to give me and a direction that there was something more, but it didn't really happen that way? Right. I'm sure、know. all those questions were going on, and that's what a lot of the people that I interview that have had experiences when they're five, when they're seven, they don't know what part is actual and what part is and wishful thinking. Exactly, or, and to get so addicted、yeah. to say it is one way or or, or another. That's、right. I, I'm trying to be balanced about it. I、yeah. really do, rather than say, oh, it's definitely this way, because、mm-hmm. I know what the UFO、uh, community is like, and I know what、uh, you know. You know it, 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 in a sense, it's a money making industry. Unfortunately, right? Unfortunately, yes. But it, it's okay to make money. From something, right? Yes, yes. But but I do think you know this is my truth, it kind of thing,、mm-hmm. and I'm sticking by it f- for the people in that community. There's a massive divide right now going on as well. So and the other thing、story. too, no, that's a, that's a whole other documentary, of、yeah. course. The, with the evidence that's compiled, with people from the government here in the United States coming out talking about Area 51, all of these things. That so there's the the you know. Extraterrestrial piece, and then you have people like what you're investigating now, who are regular people, like Paul Selig. We were at an event very recently, a conversation up at the Wilmette Theater. Here's a gentleman who was a NYU professor for 25 years, had his tenure, you know, very happy with his life, and has about nine beings speaking through him. What was your take of Paul Selig? Well, we clashed a bit. Did you? I, I I I think in the interview I love him to bits. I would always give him a hug. I love the guy, but we did clash a little bit because when it came comes down to truth,、mm-hmm. whose truth? Right. right. He's done a book on the truth that his guides say are is the, the truth. Way, yeah. The, the Their truth. truth.、Mm-hmm. Yeah.、Um, and we clashed. I think a little bit. Not not majorly, but、um, I just felt that. I see. I love Paul, and I, and I love all the channelers. So I,、mm-hmm. I'm, I, I can't sit here and say,、um, and I'm not going to say anything that, that bad. But well, no, you have a different version of what I, truth is. I, yeah, that was what it was. Okay, and, and you know, I said, what's your version? My truth, right?、Which、my is? truth is my truth. Well,、yeah. which is what? What is my truth in all this? <laughs> um, <laughs> um, my truth is that we are a soul, and that's just a word for it. I don't know if that's even the right word. That's the word that's in the dictionary.、Mm-hmm. You can call it energy if you want.、Um, we're something having this experience, and we carry on when we cross over.、Mm-hmm. What is crossing over? I don't even know what that is anymore. I think what we know, or what all the books out there tell us. Is other people's truths、mm-hmm. is a grain of sand on an infinite beach.、Mm-hmm. That's how much we know. Now, does that should that stop you progressing and wanting to find out more in that direction? Absolutely not. Because even if none of this was true, the one thing I found is beautiful,、um, beautiful、uh, ways to live my life. You know, coming from oneness,、mm-hmm. knowing that love is the only answer,、uh, knowing that we are all connected at this, at, at, at even even a you know even as, as flesh and blood. Right. Right. I, I've take if if none of this was true, when I cross over, it's nothing. Right. Right. I know that something great came from the exploration of looking into the unknown and trying to find something and trying to find something. I、mm-hmm. think there is something because of synchronicities that happen in my life all the time.、Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. But is it as defined as what the big people with all the following say it is? Right. I don't think so.、Mm-hmm. And why do they? Some of these p- big people get such a massive followings. And I'm not trying to say that from a a jealous perspective. Neither.、Mm-hmm. I think sometimes. That there are reasons of you know maybe they've had past lives where they've been in you know religion before、mm-hmm. and this is just another form of religionist in a sense right, right? could be、um, y- y- what you see on the front sometimes is not what's going on in the background right、mm-hmm. M- a lot of people that I've interviewed are. Grumpy, not very nice、right. people. Some of them, yeah, and yet they are portrayed. Me as, too. <laughs> well, me too. Me <laughs> yeah, too. Yeah, I am.、Right. No, no I, I'm saying、yeah. <laughs> a lot of people I've interviewed. Right, right. Yeah, <laughs> right. you know, you, 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 when it's, the camera's not rolling and the tape's off and you're preparing the interview,、uh, you, you see the real person. Yeah, and you're like, yeah. oh my god, my idol's just been destroyed. I、right. love you, <laughs> <laughs> but I can't sit here from any perspective to say I've got a squeaky clean past or、right. you know, I'm some perfect person. I have bad days.、Perfect. We all have bad days. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So you know, going back to Paul as well the, with, with with the truth and everything. Well, the, you know,、um, what what is the truth?、Um, I think for when I started to channel, 
it's you know my what came through me was was you know that we take our truth with us when we cross over and how old were you when the channeling began i think i was 36 37 okay so basically you know i'd gone to uni done my university uh trained then uh, not only from the electronic side and the background you know to you know to actually be the front person at the on the front of the camera or the radio mm-hmm. and um yeah, I, I yeah, I, lo- things didn't work out with me and my ex partner and my life at the time. I went through losing my business, my partner, home, and everything. Right, right. And it was at that point where I was at my lowest that the voice came through. Now that, that by the way, yeah. is a through line in almost every interview. I know when people are on their <laughs> knees, you know. That, and this is what I heard that came through. And I'm not a channeler, but I apparently the clear audience, the Q-tips have kind of cleared the pathway. And I heard you had to go without to be able to go within. That was what I heard. I had to get up out of bed and go write it down. And now it's on a little piece of paper when I'm brushing my teeth, so I can look at that and remember. I had to go without so I could go within. Yeah, absolutely, mm-hmm. and. It, so it was two days, three days after it came through. And the day it came through, I thought I was losing my mind. I thought, well, this is what a Neil Donald Walsh moment is. Mm-hmm. And I just want to hear that voice. I'm so, because I'd, I'd been watching another previous, um, uh, uh, tuning in film, it was called, um, by David Thomas. I'd been watching that a few months prior and I, and I kind of felt I was watching it because there was a knocking on my, on the door in a sense. Mm-hmm. Something wanted to come through. Um, but this was many months later, maybe even six months or more later this was, when everything collapsed. But, you know, did I want to hear that voice? Is, was that something I wanted to, 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 to call what it was, but it wasn't quite that? Yeah. Um, maybe. It told, me, it told me his name was Edgar Casey, that he'd worked with myself in previous lives. And, and that, did uh, you know anything about Edgar Casey? I Casey? did. I was working with the Casey Center at the time, oh, okay. offline in Virginia. So I thought, Got oh, it. come on, Kev, you just want that to be the case. Of you know course, what I mean? right. <laughs> and that, he told me that was the reason I was working with the Virginia Center. Of it course. was all part of the build-up, just... Yeah, you know, and and he came through, and then my mother in uh, my brother's uh, mother in law, who was the only local one that I knew that was spiritual mm-hmm. in the area that I'd moved to because I'd gone to live back to my friend's house because I had nothing at the time. Um, uh, I called her. I said, "Listen, there's a voice. <laughs> it's telling me that I've got to con- contact someone who can help me progress it." And it did say to me, "We either progress this or you, we don't." And that was the agreement. If you mm-hmm. choose to go ahead then the agreement is to go ahead. If we don't, that's fine as well in this lifetime. Right. So, and it felt so peaceful. I almost wanted to cry when it came through. It was so loving. Mm -hmm. And um, anyway, I went to see Pauline, the lady that's now part of my book that I'm writing. We actually wrote a book together Mm -hmm. over many months um, called um, Who Am I Really? Who Are You Really? Mm -hmm. And I I now look back on that book and it was my spiritual team coming through. Mm -hmm. I didn't even understand what a team was at the time. And I've been been doing these these shows for so long. Right. I felt crazy to be the person on the other end doing that. (laughs) I can completely relate because only recently have I been talking about these little whispers that have been coming that now that I look back, I actually recall as a child getting little clear audience nudges. When I was 12, I remember one very, very specifically. And and so it was like, huh, I just think my skepticism as a journalist would shut it down because it wasn't okay to talk about. And it's sort of like I was talking about this with a friend just today. He said, you know, Spirituality is kind of like pornography. Everybody's doing it. Nobody wants to talk about right, it. <laughs> right. Right. So, I hate to put spiritual and channeling hey, in the same listen, you know lid as pornography. But well, you know what, what I mean. What's the matter with making love? It's all part of the, this, it's this experience, isn't yes, it? Yeah. And we need entertainment sometimes as well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> totally. But 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 you know. Um, you know, I doubted it all the way, mm-hmm. even to now. And, and the ego side of me said, no, no, you're supposed to be Art Bell. Mm-hmm. You're supposed you're to the be doing something. Right. What, what are you doing? This is going to ruin your career, mm-hmm. right? Yep. But I, th- I then look back now and I think, well, maybe I built up all that channel that I've done so far because of what I'm going to do next. Maybe there's a bigger thing. Right. Oh, gosh. So so I did the book and and 
I, you know, and another thing I just want to say here, I have, uh, again, I'll say, you know, I, I question why this was coming through me because I'm like, you know, I've not, I wasn't a Jesus type figure. I've not got a squeaky clean past. I've been right. up to all sorts. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I'm like, why me? And it just case that it will come through whoever's prepared to listen. Jesus was a carpenter. He wasn't the CEO of a company. <laughs> so, you know, this is, it comes where it comes. It does. And yeah. I, you know, and did Jesus have children? Probably. Probably. Right. right? right. But, you know. And it was when I moved to Amsterdam. I moved to Amsterdam for very different reasons, right, mm-hmm. um, than, than what I, I ended up there for in the end. You know, I, I, I moved there for one thing. Hash. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, well, <laughs> that, be uh, I, I did get addicted to that. Oh, I really? I did get addicted to that over okay. there. Yeah. Got yeah. It. Well, it was yeah. so easy to find. <laughs> yeah. hey, you know me. You've looked okay. me up. <laughs> I told you my clear yeah. audience was coming in. All right. No, yeah. go ahead. And, um, um, but, but I, you know. I, I didn't know. I'm no, not kidding. No. I just heard I, I remember, though, before I moved, I moved <laughs> over there. I remember I had this dream before I moved over. I had walked away from this path of doing the talk show host. I, I was doing it still, right, mm-hmm. doing a few shows, but I was like, no, I'm going over there to do something completely different. I've got my old business partner back from 2001 Mm -hmm. because I moved back to that old area that I lived in or never wanted to go back. And, you know, we were determined to set this business up, go over to to Holland to set this thing up. I remember three days before I went over, I had this dream and I was in this audience and I knew I was in America Mm -hmm. and this voice around me said, do you want to know what purpose feels like? And I was like, well, sure, go on. Game on. Yeah. Next minute I was in the one that was doing the interviewing in in the in this talk show and it was an oprah type show and i felt so fulfilled i felt so happy i felt so i knew i was wealthy but it was wealth with the right type of attitude not misusing it i mm-hmm. knew i was helping a lot of people with the talk show and i always wanted to kind of move in to do a type of oprah show now whether that was that type of show a real life inspirational show i don't know it doesn't need me say it is that right but then I woke up and I was like, forget that. I'm go- going to Amsterdam and I- I'm set on this new business. I've walked away from this. Why are you showing me this? Goodbye. Right. But of course, then things didn't work out over there. Mm-hmm. I lost my business partner about three weeks after because he had to move on and do his own thing. You know, mm-hmm. he had his own issues going on and I totally respected that. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm miles away from what I would call home. I'm in, an- in another speaking country you know, that doesn't even speak English. Bear. Well, they do, but it wasn't the main language. Sure. I realized I was there for other reasons. That's Mm -hmm. when I came up with the idea for the documentary. And so here we are and you're filming this documentary. Yeah. What is the through line? What is your main theme? Okay. My main theme in this documentary is that it's called They Call Us Channelers because I wanted to go out there to show that we all have this ability. We can all channel. It's nothing special. Mm Mm-hmm. By God, what have I found? I never even envisaged that I would be interviewing or have interviewed, uh, when this is done, nearly 70 people in person, nearly 70 channelers, Mm -hmm. all with mixed ideas of their truth, all with different truths. And others would say, well, mine's true only, you know, you know, or the others would say there can be different. There's so many differences in all this. Mm -hmm. Uh, What am I finding out? Well, I'm starting to think that actually maybe... Even when I channel, maybe there's a. Sl- uh, it's not the full portion of what's coming through what I thought was coming through. Mm-hmm. I think they are all, and we are all connecting to the, the our soul. When someone says it's a future aspect, when someone says it's the guys, I think we're part of that team. Mm-hmm. So is it your is it higher self, Kevin, that has? You know, sort of like branches of that highest self that is coming back to you? It could well be. We may already have crossed over. We may be that team already. Right. So each, it seems like I found out the mission of my team. My team is going on the outer edges of the unknown beyond time, beyond what, what we know is reality. And it's purposefully using me to find other channels because it wants to progress itself. We always think it's for the humans. Actually, there's something else going on here. And us knowing a grain of sand on, on an infinite beach, uh, the picture is un, 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 it's unfolding, it's showing itself to me that the mission of my team is they are trying to find others of them, other channels. Mm-hmm. Right. Makes no sense to me, mm-hmm. right? And I realize that they, they tell me now that they're using me to do that. And we all have teams. Now, 
I, How big is your team? I, well, it, it, it seems to be on a round table, and there seems to be others there. Do they change up, or do you have an A team, a B team? No. Somebody's sick, they call the guy in the C team? Uh, yeah, right, right. <laughs> but it, it, even that understanding of the team, right, right? I'm thinking, hang on a minute. Is this just my way of understanding something that they're trying to show me, which is not what it is? Mm-hmm. Am I just bringing through a percentage of my soul? Right. When I channel, and when anyone else channels, it's a percentage of the soul that's coming through through so what is the rest of the percentage Mm -hmm. that's coming through um that is up for debate um i can't say and sit here and and i'm not here to destroy anyone's work right right Mm -hmm. i i'm i'm just seeing that even if someone was to say someone was fake or they're not tuning into what we think they're tuning. I think they're still tuning into an aspect of themselves, Mm -hmm. but it's a percentage I see. Right. And do you protect yourself in case there's an energy that is maybe something dark that could be coming in with a I've, message that's not of the light? Have you I've ever only ever brought love in. Okay. I've never brought a message that wasn't love. Mm-hmm. Mine's a kind of like a love guy. Yeah. Guide. That's mm-hmm. what it really is. It's, you know, when people ask me for readings, like the other day, someone's emailed me, oh, can I have a reading with Kevin? And I've emailed back, well, I, you know, I'll experiment with doing a reading with you, but I'm not charging for it. Mm-hmm. That's not my thing. Right. To give a reading for people. Every single channel is different. Um, and, and they don't seem to all know each other. When you speak to the channels, do you know this channel? No. Right. Think of it like this. You're making a documentary in New York, for example, and there's other people making the same documentary. Do you know, do you know them? Right. And I'm like, well, but you should do. Do you know what I mean? You're con- right. And they say it's not like that. Right. It's, it's not. not like that. Well, it's interesting. I, I had this healer that I met on my journey and I put in my uh, one of my books a few books ago that was an unbelievably pure channel of this sort of Christ consciousness. I saw him heal unbelievable things. And now he's gotten to this level where he has a posse and a team and then there's fear and then there's money. And then there, it's it's changing. I feel yeah. the message, yeah. the value of what it started as, and we are messing up so many pure channels with and that formula. The problem is with the bigger channels as well. You have to look at it with the same with them. How messed up is their formula when that mm-hmm. comes into play as well? Right. Just because someone's got a big ch- a following does not make them un- that that's not taken hold already. Right. Because right? when you start challenging someone, you know... Um, they've got to think of, well, is this going to upset the the following I've got? Is this going to upset the monetary basis I've got already? You know, I've, I've, I've worked on this and, 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 and I don't want to rock, rock the apple cart. Now the, other thing to this as well is you know here i am coming along for someone that's just started to channel since a few years ago mm-hmm. what real uh value is that in the sense when others have been doing it for so long have i really learnt my craft right have i put the time into it like they have well that no, no. you haven't but it doesn't doesn't discount the fact that it's coming through you and that you should keep trying to work on it like a muscle some people run a marathon after only training a year no that that you know? true and i think that there is a different type of energy coming in now i've not met very not met very many new trans channelers that mm-hmm. seems to be an old energy where we say bye bye i'm going mm-hmm. and i'm not going to be part of the teaching that it seems to be now that they're, that consciously that they're there more newer channelers are there more more present in the body right. taking the versus like of, the white brotherhood or whatever uh, well, people yeah, used to yeah, channel yeah, yeah, before yeah, yeah i'm not saying that's there's i mean i think trans trans channeling is amazing when they get out of the way mm-hmm. but actually how much out of the way are they you know who knows i mean mm-hmm. I'm just bringing that forth about how much time I've put into channeling because, Mm -hmm. you know, I've got to be careful what I say because, you know, other people are time served in this as well. Yes. I am not, right, in a sense. So, 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 but, you know... Am I a representative of a different energy where, you know, you can be open to your soul coming in quicker. We don't have to wait years. Right. Other people are on different courses. True. And you know, you don't know if since you were 12, this has been trying to knock on the door for you every year. And yet you just cleared out the channel enough for it to come through when you were in 37. And maybe. But I can't give a reading to someone about their dead relative. Correct. And so I want to ask you about that. So this evening I have Rebecca Rosen, who's a very well-known medium. We're doing an event and I, you know, she started started her Claire audience started coming through when she would journal when she was 19 and again a rock bottom she was depressed she was going through all these t- challenging times feeling very lost away from home and that's when she started hearing her grandmother who's deceased 
giving her very clear messages. So now it has advanced to where she can hear other people's deceased relatives, but also she, so last night we were having dinner, she was getting a very clear message for me that she thought might have been coming from my deceased father, but at the same token, she says, I don't know if this is your dad or just your higher self talking through me. I'm getting this, but but, but she wasn't going to hold on to this idea that it had to be Tim Weigel from the other side, or it had to be this. She was just getting these really flowing, intuitive, boom, 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 boom. And I took it for what it was, which was great information. And I was grateful to have it. Yeah. And so you've probably seen in your work, whether somebody channels a dead relative or they have a guide named Joe. Oh, yeah. You know, it's all different ways. All sorts. You know, m- 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 mother, mm-hmm. um, you know, m- my future self. Mm-hmm. Um, gosh, you know, the, like you know, the guides or mm-hmm. uh, this. And do they tell you? Yes. They say, hi, this is your future self talking. What's fascinating is with different channels, you can go deeper with them. And I went so deep down the rabbit hole with some of them Mm -hmm. where we're talking about, you know, um, this is not the first time you've lived this version of of life. Mm -hmm. You've done this many times before in different ways. You think this is the only time you've lived 2018. Mm -hmm. You've done it before. But they compare that to uh, what they called looping, which is different to... It, it kind of similar to parallel realities. Mm-hmm. They told me a lot of them that that they said the same thing that your consciousness is continuously shifting to different realities. You know, who's to say when you go to sleep that you're waking up in the same reality? Mm-hmm. Now, to me, that's a still a big one to swallow, right? Right. right. Um, but they say, you know, as you change your perspective on your truth, or as you know, they talk about a lot of law of attraction out there as well in the spiritual community. You are actually changing your reality, mm-hmm. and you are actually shifting between different earths and the the amount of realities to go to is is unconceivable Mm -hmm. but this is happening in different ways in different parallel versions now how useful is that information i say to them why are you telling me this now Mm -hmm. and the their answer is mainly because it's time for you to know that there's more there's more there's more right um so (laughs) it's interesting is it um I, your brain candy, you know, is it? Mm-hmm. Does it make a difference? I think it can do for some people. I think if that's what really turns them on to think, well, there's more, there's more, and you know, if it helps them to break free of their limited thinking, well, great, absolutely. And I have recently embraced meditation on a much more dedicated level, and I'm noticing that's where the skills have. I don't want to call it skills. That's where my channels have opened up more clearly for me to hear the messages to come through. And it's. Mm. I, I think that we all need to. I don't know about your belief system, but mine is, is that if we get our container as clean as possible, and I mean that by, you know, clean living, basically, like you don't have to live on a, you know, in a monastery. But I, I think that I've if done you... have past lives. Right. <laughs> I've, I've been there, done that, got the t-shirt. But if you have, you know, a lot of uh, chemicals in your body and processed foods and a lot of, uh, you know, drugs and alcohol, that can that can really cloud the chakras, the channels and the ability to get the messages. Would you agree? I totally agree you know i mean for someone that's done drugs you know Mm -hmm. and and most drugs um i would say yeah i mean that's not me now right i mean yeah you know if i'm with friends would i have a cigarette now and then would i drink some some beer and some wine yes but not in excess anymore i wouldn't do that Mm -hmm. and i think absolutely to you know that that clear channel is so important you know what what are we really connecting with? What are we really saying? We're saying, listen to that intuition, mm-hmm. that gut feeling. That's what the documentary is about as well, is that actually your gut feeling is your soul. That is you channeling. We channel all the time. We're always channeling. Channeling is the natural thing we do, which which is basically, if I was to sum it up, is it's like a funnel. You know, you, you, the human experience is, is brought down through the very bottom of the, the hose pipe, but you're just widening that hose pipe to allow the greater part of your soul to come through. And when we get that intuition, you speak to people that listen to their intuition, they've always won. Mm-hmm. Whatever winning is, right? right. They've all, everything's always worked out when they've listened. I tell people when they make a decision out of fear, it's like standing in quicksand. You might be on top for a bit, but then it will sink. You will sink because the foundation is not solid. And while we might not have the evidence that it's going to work out, if you are listening to that inner GPS, there's a team, as you say, that has your back. And there's a reason you're hearing and feeling that that's the right way to go. And and let's just talk about discernment as well. Because mm-hmm. that's something that's been slapped in my face big time just On recently. On this journey. Yeah. On this journey, okay. you know, uh, people... 
calling me up saying, listen, you've interviewed so-and-so. I'm going to tell you a different story about this person. Mm. And I want you to listen to me and no one's hearing my side. Right. So how do you then weed that through with your all of your information when you're deciding what to put in this documentary? Is that their reality? Is it a the, combined absolutely. information? So then you just decide which way to go? Well, that's it. There's, I always say there's always two sides to a story, right? Mm-hmm. But there can be cases when it actually is true what someone else is saying. Their experience right? is valid. Yeah. And, and why should I be the one to point the finger and say, hey, guys, this guy's... A, a, a fake or this guy's purposefully purposefully um not being true to people when i that finger should be pointed back at myself a little bit as well mm-hmm. right so yeah. you have to be careful that we don't want to take on any sort of prima donna you know oh look at me i'm great i'm, I'm you know grassing on this person mm-hmm. um very fine balance there because uh because because it's just just to be you know to do the right thing but at the same time well hang on a minute you know why <laughs> Uh, are they channeling now compared to where they were before? Mm-hmm. Maybe. But I think it's teaching me that I'm going to have to put discernment into this documentary. And when I've come across this, I'm going to have to say, well, I just can't put them in. I right. maybe couldn't mention names in the documentary. That would be mm-hmm. the wrong thing to do. Right. But I think I would have to say, well, listen, because of that information has come to light you can't come in anymore. Correct. And that's the thing we were just talking before we started rolling about sometimes people have a bad day. I mean, I get a lot of people saying, have you met this psychic? Have you met this medium? Hey, Jen, do you have a good healer? And I like to experience them for myself so that I can discern if there's value to what they do. However, I might have no chemistry with somebody, which has happened before. Some people rave about a certain psychic. I sit down with the guy and it was like dead air crickets okay. nada so that happened i'm like i'm not going to say that this person is a terrible psychic because he had a bad day when he sat down with me you know <sighs> yeah it's, it's <laughs> has that happened yeah, with you <laughs> yeah. oh yeah yeah that's happened before yeah. and you, just, you just push the conversation you try to push it forward don't yeah. you yeah um uh, you try you try <laughs> um um but you know with the discernment as well um i think that I feel that my truth is telling me that certain people resonate with certain channelers and certain mediums and certain healers. It's almost like they've, you know, you come from the, it's almost like it's a skyscraper, right? Mm-hmm. And you're on different levels and you can't go up to the higher level until you've sort of, you know, done your homework or whatever to get up or had the permission slip. So you're all coming from that same level. So when I'm attracted to a certain channeler, maybe it's because I'm on the same level as them, mm-hmm. right? So when you leave that teacher and go on to another teacher, maybe it's because you've moved on from their teaching. But really, the whole point is not to become addicted with a teacher which we, I you mean get hooked on a teacher you get hooked yes. on a, you get hooked on a medium can't leave the house without I asking mean, a medium ha- if they can leave oh, the house oh come on you've, yeah. you've heard all those stories oh, where sure. oh my god this lady won't stop calling me she calls me all the time you know right. she, she can't go grocery uh, shopping yeah, without well, calling well, well, her psychic yeah right right <laughs> yeah, you know psychic addiction mm-hmm. channel addiction but my point of my documentary is to, what I want to show people at the end of it is that you are the consultant you should have been looking for in the first place. Exactly. Right? But it's like what the mayor has said to someone that I heard. The mayor is a channeled by, um, um, oh, what, uh, Jacqueline New- Newcomb, I think. Mm-hmm. Oh, Jacqueline. I would use that mm-hmm. word. I probably got the wrong name. There. Sorry who, yes. if, you, yeah, if I have. And uh, what the mayor is saying, it's like having a house cleaner. Do you always want to do the house cleaning yourself? Mm-hmm. Or do you want to, you know, let someone else help you? I've needed mediums before and psychics. But in the end, you know, I don't need it now. And I want that to be the truth for other people where they can find that the voice within will always guide you. But it is nice to know sometimes, isn't it? It is. And the other thing is, is that I I know what my limits are, right? I know that I can get my own inner GPS working, but I know I'm not good at math. I know I need someone to help me do my taxes. You know, there there are things I'm good at and things that I'm not. And I think that's where we can go to certain practitioners. Like, for example, this healer that I'm going to introduce you to later today. I was introduced to her through my brother who doesn't do any of this stuff. He says, I just met this healer. It's unbelievable. You are so into this. You've got to come down and meet her. So I'm like, well, if he says I've got to meet her, then let me get on the first, you know, car ride down to St. Louis to meet with her. And I went in, you know, she just had my first name. I like to do that because I don't want people to Google me or research me. And um, because my brother paid for the session. So, you know, he, she didn't know who was coming in. And I was so blown away by the experience that now I, I introduce her to as many people as I can, because I know 
the value personally, and, and she, they do too. And she was off the radar. Yes, completely off the radar. Aren't they sometimes the best ones? Absolutely. Well? You, know, you know, best for I think best for me because it's it's more interesting. I don't know nothing about them, but I think it's just interesting that they've been off the. I met some of my journey right that was so off the radio, yet they were so they done so well from their work, and it was mm-hmm. like, oh my god, to have done this well, you've had a lot of. Cl- you would have been very good. You're good at what you do. You've helped so many people. Mm-hmm. So so let's just go back to discernment as well. If someone's coming in and they're ringing the discernment meter for us, right? Mm -hmm. But if their work is helping a lot of other people in a positive way, who is for us to point that finger sometimes? And that's the the kind of predicament I'm in a little bit. Mm -hmm. But... But if they're charging a lot for their readings as well, then it's okay to make money from what you do. But I think, you know, that does part of the discernment does come in there as well. Do you know I what agree. I mean? Because I feel that if you're at this 600 to $800 for an hour level, sometimes that's, you know, like tonight there's a, a price tag of $222 for this event. Some people said, oh, that's insane. I'll only pay 50 But the people that really believe in this work and that want that message and that they can afford that, they're going to pay that. No problem. You know, a funny thing that comes to my mind right now is I used to say to people, listen, with channeling, just start using your imagination. Start imagining and go with imagination and that it, it frees your mind up to allow channeling to come through. But I, I kind of think to myself, was I guilty there of just letting people talk nonsense, right, when I say right, that? Right, right. But, you know, that's what's kind of worked for me sometimes when, it, when I've just let it come through. And then sometimes when I listen back to what was said, I'm like, well, you know, that was helpful for me. Truly. Um, what else would you like to tell our listeners to do so that they can help opening up their intuition and, and really embrace what they can bring to the table without having to consult with someone else? What's worked for Trust you? yourself. Trust, yeah. Love yourself enough to know that that answer that you know that's calling you within your stomach or calling you within your, your knowing of knowing that you always look to but you always ignore sometimes because you want someone else to tell you what to think, tell you what to do and tell you how to, how to be. Mm-hmm. That, that actually's never let you down, really. Yeah. And it's always been there and you've just buried it a little bit. Mm-hmm. That is your soul speaking to you. Totally. That is. That is it. And I think sometimes we just want things to be so true. And this, and going full circle, this discernment has come in now for me for if I was to do another documentary on ufology, where it comes into that as well. It really, especially the, the secret space program as well. I just, you know, it's just making me rethink a lot of things. Mm-hmm. But I, you know, not trying to destroy anything. I think sometimes we have to ask the hard questions. We do. And so your thoughts on oneness, I'm curious. A lot of people believe that we are all, there is oneness, but then there's a lot of people like there's the light and there's the dark, like Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker. So what's your take on this? I, I think when you come to this reality, of course, that's going to be the case. You're going to have hot and cold. How would we have experience without that? Mm-hmm. And I think without that, we wouldn't be here. I think we're so shut off to what the truth is as well, because we're supposed to get on with this. But it blimps sometimes in the very distance just for us to, uh, you know, to know that we're not going crazy, that there is more and that it's mm-hmm. OK to look sometimes and, to, you know, for us to push on with this life. Because it can be difficult, can't it? Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, we, we need the opposites to have this experience. So when is the documentary going to be viewable? When can we all tune in? <laughs> How can oh, we God. keep track of your journey? <laughs> yeah, well, I'm trying to get it all done for this December to okay. get the documentary ready. So I'm just wrapping up now. So to keep track of my journey, uh, if you go to thecalluschannelers.com mm-hmm. or um, the YouTube channel, just type in The More Show on the YouTube. Show, yeah. Um, so yeah, or the KevinMoore.com, which is going to be my new website. Good. So yeah, they can keep track there. So they call us channelers, and, and I'm sure we could have sp- uh, talked about so much more stuff. Right I now. could this talk 17 r- chapters with r- you, but we're running we'll, out of time. No, you know what though? So here's the good news: you're still going to be in the states for a while. My hope is you'll be back in the Chicago I area. Hope so I can love we you. circle yeah. back and Please. have some more conversations and, about these people? Yeah, I feel bad that I've said that, like, oh, you know, uh, I fell fell out with a few, but I'm not fell out. Don't. Take what do you me wrong, mean? people. No, 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 when I said at the beginning of, uh, of the interview, you know, but um, it's all good. I, I, this was a journey for me and everyone else. It really was. So I have to tell you that when I interview some people and I present the, uh, the story, present the evidence, some people hate it and some people love it. So we're going to have people imagine if you're taking a road trip, all four people are not going to want to listen to Duran Duran. Somebody's going to want Stevie Wonder and somebody's going to want, you know, Ray Charles. So everybody has a different 
you know, taste, right? They have a different chemistry. And some people love Paul Selig's work and some people can't stand it. And some people love Carolyn Mason. Some people can't stand it. And so there are so many different, that's why we have menus with savory and with sweet and with everything in between. And I would say, you know, not trying to get myself out of a corner. I do love them all. Mm -hmm. I do. I mean, I've been with them all, right? But, you know, it has really changed my perspective on what my truth is. And I want that to be the same for everyone else. And I think my most important message right now is be kind to yourself and know that love is is the only answer. Mm -hmm. And you are much more powerful than you give yourself credit for. All answers lie within. That's so true. You have to go without to be able to go within, too. Kevin Moore, thank you for the work that you do. Thank you for everything that you're exploring. And I look forward to continuing the dialogue so that we can all be enlightened by what you find on your path. Thank you for what you're doing as well. It's great. Thank you so much. All the best to you. And to everybody out there, treat others the way you'd like to be treated. And we will see you next time. Stay spiritual, damn it.